With over seven years at world number one in 22 major titles, Steffi Graf has earned her place as one of the greatest tennis players of all time. But she almost never made it there. Steffi was denied a normal childhood, thrown into the professional world barely as a teenager, and before she knew it, was dealing with controversy both on and off the court. It's a tale of controversy, violence, and drug use. This is the story of Steffi Graf. Steffi Graf was born into a sporting family. Her grandfather worked as the chief of the city sports department. Her father, Peter, wanted to be a tennis coach. But after dropping out of high school, he didn't have many employment options. And to pay the bills, he sold cars. But everything changed once he had a daughter, who he named Stephanie, but went by Steffi. Steffi grew up in Mannheim, West Germany, which had been largely destroyed during World War II and was still in the process of rebuilding. In his time off work, Peter taught Steffi how to play tennis, showing her how to correctly hit a ball when she was just three years old, practicing in their living room. Her first racket was custom made by her father, who sawed down a regular sized racket to make it smaller. And from this living room, Steffi slowly honed her skills, hitting a ball over the sofa, which was used as a makeshift net. Consistency was rewarded by pretzels and ice cream, more than enough to keep any toddler motivated. As soon as she showed signs of talent, he dedicated his entire life to Steffi's future in the sport, one that would eventually spiral out of control. He was later nicknamed Papa Merciless for the relentless training program he gave to his daughter. But during Steffi's childhood, this commitment worked. The amateur training regime rapidly improved her skills. Within two years of picking up a racket, Steffi was ready for the court. Soon, she was entering tournaments and winning. Before Steffi's 10th birthday, the family moved to the town of Brühl, and the young tennis player was collecting junior prizes. At the age of 13, barely a teenager, she made the jump to professional tennis. Steffi was clearly a prodigy, but how well she was going to fare against the tennis elite wasn't clear yet, and the path there was not easy. Steffi wasn't an overnight success. Her first couple years in the sport were tough, but her consistency against top-ranked opponents steadily raised her ranking. In her second professional year, she had clawed her way into the top 100. But her career was tightly managed by her father, who aimed to prevent her from overplaying. Soon, she was in the top 30. Tennis insiders had been keeping tabs on her for the last few years, but it was here that she announced her arrival to the wider public. Early in 1983, she made it to the third round of the Australian Open and the French Open. Barely any of her opponents had an answer for Steffi's thunderous forehand. On her sliced backhand, every shot seemed to land precisely where she wanted, and her versatility across surfaces ensured her consistency. At Wimbledon, she ran the deepest of her young career, making it to the fourth round where she was matched up against 10th seeded Joanna Dury. Despite losing, Steffi had piqued the interest of the tennis world, who were fast realizing she was the real deal. The very next year, she claimed the first Grand Slam of her career at the French Open, only dropping one set on her way to the finals, where she beat world number one Martina Navratilova. Her only two losses of that year were at the finals of Wimbledon in the US Open. Steffi had truly found her form and was already world number one. At the time, Navratilova said that she wasn't sure how Steffi can improve to a different level. Working alongside her new coach, Pavel Slozil, she showed Navratilova exactly what level she could reach. In 1988, she made history by winning all four Grand Slams in a single year, an achievement only reached by two women before in history. She nearly repeated this in 1989, but she lost the French Open final. Still, her position at the top of women's tennis was virtually undisputed. That was until a young Hungarian player, Monica Seles, entered the picture. Steffi was defining a generation of women's tennis, but with it came a host of new problems, one that would leave her rival Celis fighting for her life in the hospital. Celis had quickly risen through the ranks to number six in the world by the end of her first professional season. In that season, she had lost to Steffi Graf in the semifinals of the French Open in a rivalry that was shaping up to be iconic. The next time they met, at the same tournament a year later, Celis was ready. After a battle for the first set, she took the reigning world champion down in straight sets. Over the next two years, Celis dominated, winning all 21 of her matches, including three Grand Slams in 1991 and all but one match in 1992. Steffi Graf's star, it seemed, had been eclipsed by a younger, stronger one. 
but tragedy struck in 1993 during the Citizen Cup in Hamburg, Germany. Celis was competing in the quarterfinals. She had comfortably won the first set and was on the way to claiming the second when a crazed spectator emerged from the crowd and stabbed her in the shoulder. Celis was rushed to the hospital and treated for her injuries. In the meantime, police learned the motive of the attack. The man was a diehard fan of Steffi Graf and wanted to see her become number one again. The man escaped jail time after being deemed mentally unstable. Celis spent over two years recovering while Steffi reportedly visited her in the hospital to offer her best wishes. Many have speculated over the years about what might have been if Celis had never been attacked. With the road cleared, Steffi wasted no time regaining the top ranking, taking the remaining three Grand Slams that year. She won 11 more titles by 1999, making it a career total of 22, having spent 377 weeks at world number one and won more than 90% of all her matches. But all this success didn't come without controversy. And it wasn't only her rivalry with Monica Sellers. Even bigger problems had been coming from inside her own family, fueled by drugs, alcohol, and power. Steffi had been accompanied by her father Peter her entire career. He was well known to the tennis world, mostly for yelling and abusing officials. But Steffi's career had come a long way since her childhood playing days. As Steffi's manager, Peter found himself with access to the millions of dollars his daughter was bringing in from global success. By 1996, she had already brought in earnings of over $100 million in prize and sponsorship money, which would be almost $200 million today. But this was split between Steffi, her coaching team, and of course, her father and manager, Peter. Peter, unlike Steffi, didn't handle success well. After his daughter's breakthrough, he told newspapers that it was difficult to try and please everyone. Over the next decade, he developed drug and alcohol addictions, partly to cope with the stress. And according to some reports, Peter was also caught up in the world of gambling. And in 1995, he was charged with tax evasion in Germany by setting up a web of front companies. He was held in a German prison, held in pre-trial detention, and when he was found guilty, Peter was sent to three years in prison. The judge emphasized that there wasn't any suggestion of Steffi having been involved but it was a peek behind the curtain at the darkness of her meteoric rise. Completely opposite to her father, Steffi was determined not to be caught up in scandals. In the year of her retirement in 1999, Steffi began dating fellow tennis legend Andre Agassi, whom she married two years later and had two children with. But even this was not without incident. After hearing news of their marriage, Peter took his shirt off and tried to fight Andre's father, Mike. Steffi herself keeps an incredibly low profile, only speaking in public for charity events and the rare interview, incredibly understated for a career that stands as one of the most impressive the sport has ever seen. She was inducted into the Tennis Hall of Fame in 2004 and has been a model representative for women's sports over the years, creating non-profit organizations like Children for Tomorrow that aim to rebuild war-torn communities and offer assistance. With a net worth of around $150 million, Steffi lives in Las Vegas with Andre Agassi and their children. They have both said that they are not keen on molding them into tennis players. With over 30 major titles between them and a tennis legacy that will endure for generations to come, the Graf and Agassi names have already been cemented into the sport.